In this set of videos, we want to take our Date Me app that we created and we want to actually attach it to a database. And so let's go ahead and open up our app. And by the way, if you if you ever get to where you don't have it up here in your uh, recent projects, make sure when you open it up, you click on this open a project or a solution button and then go out to the project date me and then open the .sln file rather than going in and individually opening up the project file or, or any individual files. Make sure you're always opening up that solution file and then you'll get all of the entire project. All right, and as you'll recall where we left off, we had created a little app that is a dating application app for us. And so we had here a little title, date, Spencer Hilton, today's your lucky day. You may have the opportunity to date this awesomeness. And then uh, we have a link to fill out the application. So we go to the application, we can put in some data. We had some data in there, but I'll go ahead and put some new stuff in. Uh, <laughs> always trying to come up with stuff is always a tough thing for me. I'm not very creative. And so um, let's just, uh, I don't know, uh, Harold uh, Green, I don't know. Age is uh, 28 years old. Phone number is, uh, I don't know, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 7, 9, 8, 0. Uh, major, what would Harold major in? I thought so too. He would major in, uh, I don't know, science, <laughs> science, uh, biology. <clears throat> uh, occupation, uh, he's currently working as a, uh, I don't know what, uh, a sales bro. Okay, so anyway, so is he a creeper stalker? Let's say no. We got to this point where we were submitting the application. Now again, I'm gonna put a stop on here to reemphasize what we did in the last set of videos. So in our controller, I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna drop what's technically called a breakpoint. I just say a stop here on the post method of our form. So as you recall, in our views, we have our uh, dating application and for this form that has all this information that they're filling out, we said when this form, when the, when the form is submitted using the submit button, then we want to post the form to this view. And so on the home controller side, we have two different options for the dating application action. One is to get the information meaning I'm just going to the page I'm, for the very first time or the second time or whatever, but I'm just going to the page. And the post is the information that comes out of the page. What's coming out of the page and what do I wanna do when that information is posted? And in this case, I'm now putting a stop on the post aspect of this dating application action because I wanna just once again peek at this response that's come in. So now in my app, when I submit the application, it'll stop on this line and I can see that the response that has come in is an instance of an application class. So I went in and, and created this class in the models called application and it has this information in it and I took in the application uh, and bound this model to that form. So when it's submitted, it's automatically populating all the fields that are in an application. It's taking it up as one bundle picture in RoboCode when we when we had the information about the heading and the name of the person who shot and, and uh, the velocity and everything else. All that information is being bundled up into one object and passed to our uh, dating application action in the home controller. And so we now have received that information. We said it was going to be a type application and I want to call it response. I could have called it blah. It doesn't matter what it's called as long as those things match. But the information that came in, I don't know what's going to happen now that I changed the name. It's not going to work. Um, 
What's sitting out in that response information is everything that I just entered in. Harold Green, biology, sales bro, phone number, and age, creeper stalker. All that information gets bundled up into an object and is passed to my uh, dating application action. In this case, I just rerouted them after they'd sent me that information to the confirmation screen. And then I'm passing along with the, the confirmation, I'm passing the actual response that I got so that it can be used by that uh, confirmation screen on its side. And as you'll recall, in the confirmation screen, we took and made it possible to receive that application by putting in this line. Okay, this is this this. If we didn't have this, it wouldn't even know what an application was. I'm saying by virtue of this line, this is the um, model that I want to use in this view. So I want to use an application. And so now when in the home controller, I say pass in the response, it's received into my confirmation view. Essentially, this is setting up a variable to receive it is the way I look at it. Um, that's now sitting out there. And then because there's only one, you can only have one model associated with any given form, then I can just access it directly in the way they choose to do that. They could have done it a different way. Rather than having you set up the name of a variable and then referring to that instance, you just call model with a capital M, and that is different than this model with a lowercase m. Remember, we're case sensitive. This model is going to contain the, the information that's being passed in. Now, it gets a little bit tricky. We can put stops in here in HTML, but HTML is executed at runtime. And so if I continue here, um, it may not do what I hoped it would do um, in, in terms of showing me that information like it would in, in, the, in the variable. And so, uh, again, that, that gets a little bit tricky, but it's taking the information that came in that was passed into it, it's going out to that information and then looking at the creeper stalker field to make this decision on what it's going to print out. And so... Um, this model with a lowercase m is indicating to the to the system which model we're going to use, and this model with the app, with the uppercase m is referring to that actual model that was passed in with the information that it had. And you may be asking yourself, if you're thinking a few steps ahead, well, what happens if I have two different forms and I want to have two different pieces of information? And just like the question came up. You know, how can we return more than one piece of information out of a out of a C sharp method? And the answer is you can't. You can only return one thing. But you can build that one thing as an object that contains multiple things, and that's exactly what we'll do here. There's something in uh, .NET MVC that is called a view model, and a view model is a model that has multiple models in it for whatever form we're using. And so that'll be in the future. Don't worry about that for now. But we can now pass the information to this form and then make decisions with that information and use it however we want to. We used it to make this, this decision here. We used it here in the middle of this H2 tag to drop in a variable that contained the first name. And so anyway, hopefully all that is helpful as just a little recap. And now what we wanna do is take the information and rather than just using it here in the form, we want to store it not just while the program's running, and as soon as the application closes, it's gone. Some information we want to perpetuate and, and continue and persist. And so uh, we will store the information instead in a database, and there's just a number of steps we have to follow to get it set up. And so we'll start into those steps in the next video. Spencer out.